software as well. And if you're going to be submitting your project to be showing off at a gala, you get some really cool Ignite points. That being said, I do have a strict deadline of April 15th to go and submit your project. We're not going to be submitting any projects or accepting any projects after that. I'll post a submission link later, but the important one right now is the link to the gala. Like I said before, like I'll say it again, we got people from like Cisco, we got people from Google, we got people from ATB. I'll even showcase a company called Benevity. Really small one, this, but it's called a unicorn company because it is, or it's unicorn startup because it's product to go and use um, software to help other large companies like Google do donations all around the world. Such a popular idea that it got purchased for $1 billion from a financial industry, financial group out there. Benevity is also one of those really cool ones on the list. Not as big as the other ones you recognize, but I dare say it's still one of the most awesome ones on that list. Anyways, enough rambling from me. You guys will hear about the gala again later. Let's get started, though, on session number seven. So today we are done pretty much all the code. We are not really introducing some new stuff here. So what I wanted to really do quickly was touch briefly on how do you make a good organized code here? We'll talk about an example of that, and then we're going to go and talk about some bonus topics. That's right. These are the ones that you guys chose back in session number five. For those of you who filled out our survey, thank you very much. That's what's going to be driving this conversation. And I missed a third bullet point down here. The third bullet point is going and working on your games. And I missed my other reminder. We are being recorded right now. So as usual, just pay attention to minor details like that. But... Let's get started. Again, what I'm going to do is say, let's go reuse the code that we worked on last time. So this was all the section six stuff. In fact, you can pretty much just copy paste in the entire thing. But if you're missing out on any of that, you can always go and check out on our links right here. So I've updated this with all of our session six stuff we worked on last time. And you can go and grab like the main.py files from right here. But you know what, instead of me spamming you with a ton of links, what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to go and point you straight over to here. You can go and find all of our files posted into here, and you can go and take it from our GitHub repository, and you can go and grab all the files you need from there. It's going to be super useful to have those on hand. Not end of the world if you don't, but just super useful if you have that already prepared. For me, I have my session number seven stuff here. I got my folder organized, and I got my enemy, I got my main, I got my platform, I got my player, all the good stuff that we've seen from last time. I also have um, the my blank template, my main copy and rename. I've been reusing that from over and over again, but we'll come back and see that a little bit later. Back to the show. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about core, code organization, which really harkens to the whole theme of object-oriented programming. And I wanna go and say that we really want to find a way how to keep things organized. And I really talked about this way back in session numbers, like zero, one, and two a little bit, but I do want to just mention it one last time, that it is a really good way of keeping things organized at this point. So it does this by doing modular code. We basically want a piece of code that is reusable, and it could be a big complicated thing, but it encapsulates one simple object or one simple idea really nicely. It's reusable. It's and be saving us on simple, or having to rework it over and over again. It is extendable. It works really well. So from this object-oriented programming session we've been working on so far. Can you name me one example of organized code that we have used in our object-oriented programming sessions? Anything with comments? Okay, okay. Anyone else got examples? Methods, the move function with sprites. Okay, do we have any other examples? of code that was really easy to be reused, really well organized with that. We got classes, okay, awesome. And libraries, well, that's actually one of our mentors, so I'm gonna go and discount that answer. <laughs> um, but basically, what I'm, I'm seeing that everyone's getting along the same themes here. Basically, anything that really helps it get things um, neatly bundled up and neatly packaged together, the one that I was really keenly on looking for was talking about classes and objects. This is the big one that we've been working on this entire time. We've had like the platform object. That's some complicated code if you ever tried staring at that stuff, but you could just stamp it out. You just say big complicated platform class, but nobody wants to really deal with that. You just want to stamp out platform. Boom, boom, boom. You got them all ready to roll. Same deal with the enemies. You can go and stamp out your enemies. You can go stamp out the player multiple times if you really wanted to. The power came from being able to split our code 
into multiple files and making it a lot easier to go and work with. That main.py file, yeah, sure, it's complicated, I'll admit it, but it could be way worse if we dropped all the code straight inside there. Other things like those sprite groups and those or methods, the move functions in there. Yeah, that's all reusable stuff for sure. Sprite groups are fantastic at being reusable from the Pi game perspective. We're the users of it. We don't have to worry about the complex logic of how does it call update or draw on every single one. That move function there, I know we've been copy pasting it, but we can use like inheritance to like reuse that a few times over. I wish I could show you an example of that, but we didn't touch on that. And I heard comments. Yes, this is an extremely important thing to be talking about. Comments are so important because we need to be able to understand our code. We need ourselves in the future, six months from now or one year from now to be able to understand. And we need other people to understand. If you think that coding is a solo experience because it's just you on a computer, oh, you're so wrong. Because I can tell you, basically every single programmer out there works on a team and they definitely need to be able to communicate with one another. And yeah, actually, one last key point here that's really highlighted, remind ourselves what each module can do. Yeah, that's important. And what it cannot do as well. And maybe if we frame this, what it should not be doing. It's a really nicely organized way of being concise with like your wording and comments, plain old English, plain old simple words here can really convey a lot. Never underestimate the mighty comments. All right, with that, we're gonna be moving into this and I'm gonna be integrating in some of that code organization stuff into the first bonus topic here. So the first bonus topic I wanna to be talking about is levels and ah crap, I got some spoiler effects going on here. I'm gonna jump back one slide here. What I'm talking about is levels, right? And in a level, you know, you've got level one, level two, level three with your different players and, or that your um, game can progress through. Let's take a simple platformer, maybe like Mario, for example. And now here's a question for you. What are some things inside a level? Someone wanna tell me what? they think belongs inside a level? Okay, end goal, tile arrangements, sprites. Okay, okay, I'm liking it. You got some um, problem solving planning inside your head here. And we see that like we got background, we got all different sorts of things that happen inside a level. And each level is quite different from one another, right? I mean, the example I'm gonna be building on today, which, eh, that spoiler effect is right here on here, is gonna be talking about the different platforms or the different enemies that you can have. I mean, it'd be pretty darn boring if we had only one and only one, and only one enemy that could sit in the exact same spot every single time for every single level in our game. Worst Mario game ever, if you ask me. So we want to be able to have like, maybe this is the beginner level, just with this one single enemy. Maybe we want level 10 to have 10 different enemies. Maybe we want different ways to go and set this all up, but we want to keep it organized too. So what I want is another way. I'm going to go and take some of this code that we have rewritten here and take this um, main file here. Oops, um, that's not what I wanted to do. And I want to go and shrink it down, keep it organized a little bit. So I'm going to go and do this by creating a level class. So I copied in all my stuff from session number six. I'm gonna pop it in here. I'm gonna go and create my level.py class. And so we're gonna need Pygame, um, import Pygame, and then we're gonna go class level, colon, and I'm gonna go def, double underscore in it, double underscore. And from here, what I wanna say is my level has a list of platforms and a list of enemies. So I'm gonna go platform list and I'm gonna go enemy list. And oh my gosh, I made the cardinal sin. I forgot the very first one, self. There we go, do not make my mistake. Please put self in there. And so when we're going and creating this level here, we want to say um, self.platforms is equal to pygame.sprite.group. And it will just drop in the entire platform list. So, Spoiler effect, I have not told you that you guys can actually go and drop in extra stuff inside these parameters here. This has some extra bonus stuff. Put a list into there, it's gonna go and transform it all into a sprite group, every single one in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing with enemies. Self dot enemies equals my game dot sprite dot group. And I'm gonna put in my enemy list. Excuse me. You know what, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that is for now. So I'm just gonna go save that file with just that in those two lines. 
what we're going to be able to do with this is have a nice, really organized way of accessing all of our enemies in the level, all the platforms in the level. But let's go and create a level or two to go and demonstrate what I want to talk about. I'm going to be editing directly onto my main.py file right here. Let's scroll around. You know what? I'm going to just drop it right above the player. It doesn't really matter where, but you guys will see why I chose this in a second. I'm going to have a list of levels. I have level one, two, three, four, et cetera. So I'm going to have levels is equal to a big list. Square brackets. OK, that's not a terribly big list. But what I can do, I'm just going to go and kind of do brackets within brackets within brackets craziness here. So I'm going to have a list of levels. Inside my levels here, I'm going to have one level. Oops. I need to go and import that first, pardon me. So I'm gonna go from level, import level, do the usual, get that class into there. And I'm gonna go create a new object, a brand new level object, capital L, level. And I'm gonna go open round brackets. What does it tell me? It needs a list of platforms and a list of enemies, right? So I'm gonna start with bare bone basic. Uh, that's really badly typed bare bone basics, but there we go. That's a level with a little, empty list of platforms and an empty list of enemies. Okay, that's boring. Oh, we did not pay for this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go inside each of these brackets here. I'm just gonna press enter. My VS code is smart enough to automatically format that for me. I'm just gonna press tab, make sure it's all indented here. And I'm gonna go and create a bunch of platforms on the fly. You know what? I don't like all this platforms dot add all this extra junk here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna steal this one line of code here. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna paste it down here. I'll press comma, and I'm going to repeat that again with the next line. I'm going to do this with all four of my lines here. And this is a way how to go and pretty much represent your level as just a piece of data. There are other ways to make this happen that is more organized. And for example, if you want, you can figure out ways how to load up your levels from a file so that anyone can make their own custom um, levels and send it to you over email or Discord or whatever you want. Or you can basically, you can load it from a database. You can have the internet provide million levels for you. I think it's super cool, but you just need a way to organize it. Okay, excellent. we got a level. Reading it over again, the first parameter is a giant list of platforms. The second parameter is a giant list of enemies. Okay, giant's an exaggeration. Let's just take this one enemy up here, copy that in, paste it down. Excellent. What am I going to do with all this leftover code here? For now, I don't want to delete it just yet. My little cheap hack, in cheap hack is, yeah, delete code when you're done with it. But if you're not quite sure yet, just simply comment it out. That's highlight all those lines of code. And that's control slash, control slash to comment it out, control slash again to bring it back in. Here's why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go and knock those out of existence for a while, which will make the rest of my code down here complain because there is no more enemies or no more platforms. But what I can do is, Actually, I will, let's see. I need to go and talk about my level first, a little bit out of order here. I need to go and say which level. I mean, I have an entire list of levels, but which one am I talking about? I'm going to get a level number, and I'm going to just say level number zero. And level is equal to level number. Uh, oops, a level number. I'm sorry. Levels at level number. Okay, let's read that over one last time. Level number here, let's just get the first number on the list here. Levels, or the level we're choosing is from the levels list, pick zero, number zero, the first entry on the list. Perfect. We can scroll down through here, and I see my players.update. I'm going to go, instead of enemies.update, I'm going to go level.enemies.update. And down here with my platforms, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go level.platforms.draw. I'm going to say level.enemies.draw. And what we're now doing, is instead of just grabbing a list of variables populated straight here at the top, we're going to be moving all this stuff inside the level. We're going to be grabbing that one, and we're going to be interacting with that. Let's go and press the play button, make sure I didn't break anything. Whoops, I did. Oh, dear. That was not intentional. And let's see. Name error platforms is not defined, so let's play our favorite game called Spot the Typo. Anybody knows what line number I screwed up, go ahead and shout it into chat. <laughs> I'm not shy about making my mistakes here. Oh, here we are. High game dot sprite dot sprite collide. We need to go and say level dot platforms. We need to um, grab every single instance here and make sure that we go and handle that. 
How about those enemy collisions? Level dot enemies as well. There's other ways you can just simply create a variable to hold on to that and make less things blow up. But you know what? I think that works. And and can I do it? Okay, perfect. I actually killed it this time. Excellent. So we managed to go and refactor our code. We managed to make it organized into a nice little level here. And what's really nice about this is I can go and take this code, see how my highlighter shows me that it is, is at the end of the level definition. So that's in comma. I'm going to take all this code up here, copy that, paste it. And I can just tweak a couple numbers here. So maybe instead of platform at 300, 600, maybe I make it at 350 and maybe put it a little bit lower, 700. Maybe I'm going to duplicate my enemy on here by just taking this enemy, duplicating it on the list, and I'll put it at 150. And sure, what the heck, I'll put it in midair, um, 210 or 200. Ah, that's not 200. There we go. What level am I playing on? I don't want to be on level number zero anymore. I want to be on level number one. With that, should have, boom, a brand new layout, a brand new enemy set up here. And we didn't have to go and delete our old one. We now have multiple levels that we can have. We can have a full-blown platformer experience with this. Naturally, of course, what do we want to do when we want to get through this? We want to be able to move on to the next level. So what I'm going to do, just maybe down here before my while loop, but after my players, I'm just going to go down here, def, next level, so that the player can go from one level to the next. I'm just going to make myself a nice little handy function here. And I'm going to say level number plus equals one. And I'm going to go um, level is equal to levels and just go with that level number again, okay. which is a really great way to go and access the next level in a convenient way. And it should also go and replace all the level in, or all of this stuff instantly. So let's go and put that down here. I'm going to just go and cheat. I'm going to say for enemy and hit enemies. And I'm going to say, if you kill any enemy at all, we're going to go to the next level. Next level. It's not a terribly great game with that. It means that you can go and get through the game really, really quickly. But it's, I think, a good enough you know, demonstration that you can just put a nice little function call together. So can I do it? Can I actually get this enemy this time? Boom. And apparently, it did not like my plans here to go and completely swap out the levels here. This is why you need to go and test your code out before you go and demo it. But effectively, the idea here is that it should be working and grabbing the next one. I'm going to see if I could cheat and plug in a global level keyword. It is not the prettiest solution, but this might be the answer to go and do it. Global variables are generally a bad idea. I do not recommend them. Oh. All right. You know what? I'm going to come back to that part a little bit later. This is a bit of an unscripted part. And there should be easy ways to go and talk about getting rid of the entire levels. I apologize, that was a little bit of a mistake on mine. You put level next to player def, not enemy def. Did I? Wow. Let's check. I think I did. You win a prize, sir. <laughs> if it works this time, oh, never mind. I just crashed it this time around. <sighs> level number is referenced before assignment. Again, that's probably because I missed a global keyword. Perhaps a better strategy instead of using global is to go and actually put in level number here, and we go and put in the level itself, so it actually changes it. Global is generally a frowned upon word. We, we've been teaching that to our beginners to cheat, but honestly, it's a lot better if you put in the level number here and the level, so that way you can go and change it. So apologies on that. I'm not going to try doing that any further, but we basically get the idea. When your player goes and interacts with a level, things can happen, which is like, for example, swap out the entire level on them. OK. Cool. Now, there's also another hidden benefit that I wanted to go and show off with this as well. When we're talking about levels here, we can also go and use them as a quick way to communicate. Another interesting thing, bullets. Let's go and make our player be able to go and shoot things and blow up other stuff. I think that's going to be a fun way to do it. So a lot of dense code here, but this is a lot of just the same copy paste that we've seen before. Let's go and get ourselves started with a class called bullet. I'm going to go create um, bullets. And inside here, I'm going to go import OS for that picture and then import pie game. And then I'm going to go class bullet capital B on there, pie game dot sprite dot capital sprite on there. This is all the regular stuff we've done before. So F double underscore in it, double underscore 
So, and we're going to say, what do we need inside a bullet? Well, I know that I want an X coordinate. I want an Y coordinate. I want an X speed as well, just to go and define what its initial speed should be at. And I'm going to do one last piece here. I'm going to say, give me a list or give me the level that we're currently playing on. All right. So we'll go and see why we need this level on the end here. But for now, just take my word for that. Oops, that did not work as intended. I'm going to say that um, self, oops, I'm going to need this, the regular stuff here. I need to go super open bracket, close bracket, uh, double underscore in it, double underscore open bracket, close bracket, all the regular stuff here. We're also going to need the image location that's going to be equal to pi or os.path.join. My brain is apparently not cooperating with me today. And that's going to be my usual. That's going to be my asset. And today's image is going to be called bullet.png. Where can you find good old bullet.png? I've got that downloaded on my computer, but you can find that right at this link here. Oh, and let me go and drop that in chat. You guys can borrow that image. Or if you don't like that really itty bitty tiny blob there that I've drawn, chosen for an image, the good news is that I've actually uploaded a whole, been uploading a whole bunch of other images as alternatives. Underneath our GitHub project, under session seven, I've listed a whole bunch of other ones here. So if you want this blue fireball looking one, or if you want to actually have a literal fireball, I've uploaded a couple alternatives for you here. Just be sure that you go and choose the appropriate name. You have to rename your file to bullet.png, or you have to go and choose one of these other names I've listed here. Go ahead, take a look if you'd like. But for now, I'm going to be copying this bullet.png. So give me two seconds. Someone give me a thumbs up when they have that picture downloaded and ready to go. the overwhelming silence. I'm just assuming you're all mashing your keyboards really fast. All right, we got one, perfect. So anybody need more time just to grab the image or type in the code we've got so far? All right, see then. I've just been told that there is a Zoom yes or no features. I am not well versed in running Zoom sessions, ironically enough. But any of you guys do need an extra hand there. Let me know. I am going to be carrying on just so that we're not holding up too much here. This is all just a regular grab that image and plug it in. So we're going to just simply do the next line here. Self image is equal to, we're just going to do the basic style here. Uh, again, but image dot load. And we're going to get, use that image location. And we're going to be using that um, convert alpha line right there. Perfect. We'll need to do some of the other regular stuff. Self dot rect is equal to self dot image dot get underscore rect open bracket close bracket. And we'll go and set those xy coordinates. Self dot rect dot x equals x. Self dot rect dot y equals y. Let's also go and add in this x speed here. Self dot x speed is equal to x speed. So that's going to be something familiar we've seen before. This is the same speed for making your player walk around, your enemy walk around. And here's a new one. Nothing fancy. We're just going to store it as a variable. Self dot level is equal to level. Bada bing, bada bam, bada boom. Perfect. We now should be able to go and get a bullet that's on screen. Let's go also have some more fun with this. We're going to go and set up a move function. This is going to be this exact same one as before. It's going to be def move. We'll put in the self keyword here. We're going to put in that X change, that Y change right here. We're going to go self dot rec dot X plus equals X change. Self dot rec dot Y plus equals Y change. There we go, excuse me. 
And from there, you guys probably know how update works, def updates. And we're going to go self, and oops, that's it, all we need in there. And we're going to go self.move. And we're going to go self.xchange, or not oh, exchange, sorry, x speed. And then we're going to go and set the y speed to be zero. Our bullet's just going to fly nice and flat. You guys can always do your own fancy math to go and make it and change the directions wherever you need. All right. Let's go and prove that that works. I'm going to go back to main.py and I'm going to go from bullets, import my bullet class here. Perfect. And let's see. Right now, I don't actually have any bullets to draw. So I'm going to go and cheat. I'm going to just draw one bullet smack in the middle of the screen here. We're going to need to go and revise this later and actually make it kind of interactive. After all, we want it to be shooting from the player. But start simple, build your way up. So after my players here, I'm going to go bullets is equal to pi game dot sprite dot group. Make a nice little list of bullets here. And we're going to go bullets dot add. And we'll go and just start with the one default bullet right here. We need an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, an x-speed, and a level. So how about I go and set it to be, how about right on top of the player? 400, 500 for the coordinates. How fast do we want this thing to travel? I'm going to start with a nice measly slow level two. Slow two. Now what level do we want to put in? I'm going to put it inside the level parameter that we have been setting up along the way here. OK. And now that we got this, we can go. Oh, wow, I realize there's a little typo down here. I will talk about this later to do Richard and um, show fix for next level. I realize this is terribly broken and we need a better strategy for that, but I will come back to that later, less to waste our time. Bullets dot add bullets. So we're gonna go and add one bullet onto the screen here. I'm not gonna make it any fancy on how to do that. I just wanna go and say bullets dot Update down in my update section down here. Scroll down a little further, and we'll do it inside the draw section as well. We'll say bullets draw on the screen, please. Let's go and play that. See if we can get a bullet meandering across the screen. Ew. Okay, perfect. We got one bullet that's slowly sliding across the screen. Not bad, not bad. But naturally, that's not a very good way of making our bullets. We need our bullets to be able to shoot from the player. We need our bullets to go and be able to hit things, right? So what we can do, let's go and make this inside the player so that the player can actually go and shoot their little gun here and shoot off some magic bullets or whatever you want to have happen here. I'm going to hop inside my player.py file over here. And let's go and make a brand new function called shoot bullets. I think in our slides, we call it create new bullet. Pop it down at the very end because anywhere is a good spot. Def uh, shoot bullets. That's what I'm just going to choose because it's a nice intuitive name to me. Self. I'm also going to go and ask for what level did we do this in. So inside here, I'm going to go and actually create an entire list of bullets for this. The player is going to be responsible for hanging on to all of our bullets. Hmm. Actually, come to think of it, I'm going to have a quick change of mind here. I'm going to go and there are multiple ways to do this, I will say. Uh, you know what? Sorry. Improvising is not my strong suit here. We should probably stick to what the slides say. And the slides recommend that we um, have a bullet that is set up right inside the player class here. So we're going to go and like create a list of bullets. So we got our player. We got all this fancy code down here. And I'm going to go pop down some extra lines here. And I'm going to go self bullets is equal to pi game dot sprite dot group. That's right. You can have a sprite group inside another sprite. The rules never said you couldn't, so you know what? Why not? Let's do it. What we're going to need to be able to do here, we need to go and do the typical update section. We're going to need to do the typical draw section as well. Oh, the draw is just a line of code. And that one's um, OK. The update is also just another line of code. So we can just simply do self.bullets.update, self.bullets.draw on the, our screen here. I always realize that that's not actually as smart of an idea as I thought. And this is where, as I promised, do not try improvising things on the fly here. Rather, what's going to be more convenient so I don't have to pass around a screen variable is just going to be down here. We have level.enemies. We're going to also do player or player.bullets.update because we can access that as well. We're going to be down here in our draw section as well. We're going to go player.bullets.draw as well. So just to recap, because I know I've been changing a lot of things on the fly here. 
just this last few moments. Inside player, we have the sprite group defined right here. We're going to be deleting the other one we just used. We're going to put this inside the player. Inside our update section for player, I didn't do anything in there. I apologize for confusing there. Over inside our main section, we're going to go and have the player dot oops, the player dot bullets dot update right inside our other update section. And we're going to also go and do our player dot bullets dot draw. Let's make this formal. Let's go and delete this code right here. Bullets equals pi game dot sprite dot group and bullets dot add. Let's say goodbye to those lines of code. Inside over here on the player section, when we're going to go shoot our bullet down here, F shoot bullet, what I'm going to do is say self dot bullets dot add, and I'm going to insert my brand new bullet right here. So I'm going to go self dot rec dot x, self dot rec dot y. I'm going to go set a speed for that bullet. Let's make it a little bit faster. We're going to set it to a speed of five here. What's the level we're going to give it? We're going to give it the level that we pass in as a parameter here. We're going to take this level, pass it on through. It's complaining at me. Why is it complaining? Because we don't have bullet to find. That's right. We need to add that to our import list. Come bullet, import bullet. There it goes. Should be nice and happy now. Okay. With that, we need one last part. We need to go and actually make something happen. So I'm going to go and set it up so that whenever I shoot, a bullet's going to pop out. That's going to be a really nice spot right over here. Let's see. If he's pressed, high game dot K space. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to say player dot shoot bullets and auto complete that for me. Once again, that's inside our keyboard events section. If the keys press square bracket pi game dot k space player dot shoot bullets. Let's see, did I get this right on my first try? You jump around and uh, nope, it obviously did not quite work. It, it's missing a parameter. Was it missing? Well, this is where you just simply learn how to read these things. It's telling me I missed level. Of course, what am I shooting at? I think, or which level am I shooting these bullets in? I need to go and pass that inside as well. Let's try that again, see if it is now happy. And there it goes. Oh, I got a full blown bullet stream there. But I think that that's actually honestly kind of awesome. Sweet. Last part, that enemy seems to be waddling around a little too happy that he managed to escape unscathed. Let's change that up, shall we? So now my player is happy. I'm going to jump inside my bullet class over here. And inside bullet, I need some way to go and check for my collisions here. So this is where I want to go and organize my code again. I don't want to go and put it inside main.py. I'm like, yeah, I can. This file is getting a little bit long. And personally, I would love to be able to split this up into some smaller files. Let's go and say, when the bullet collides with an enemy, go make something happen. Well, how do we go get those enemies? Now, those enemies are stored inside the levels. So I'm going to go and set that up. Def uh, on enemy, or let's see, I actually, I can name it whatever I want, but honestly, it's probably better if I don't choose too many wild names for today. Let's call this thing handle collisions right there as it's written inside our slides. Def handle collisions. Did I spell that right? I discovered that if you spell names wrong, it becomes terribly difficult to debug later. So take care to do a little bit of spelling. We're just going to do handle collisions self. We're going to type it in like that. And we're going to be hitting the enemies with it. So hits enemies. Uh, you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll go hit enemies is equal to pi game dot sprite dot um, sprite collide all one single word down here. What's colliding with it? Well, we got the singular thing hitting a list of other ones. I want to imagine that we have a list of enemies, a whole bunch of people that we can fire at, and we got one single bullet, and we got to go and figure out how to do the interaction with that. So which bullet is that? That bullet is self. It is this very same bullet we're talking about. That's going to be colliding through. It is basically, as I have shown in previous sections here, instead of saying like the player, for example, or instead of talking about the platforms, we're going to be saying which one? We're going to be doing the one we're currently working on, this bullet itself. So we're going to pass in the self keyword right there. Afterwards, we're going to be talking about the enemies. Where do I get the enemies from? I'll never pass it in. Ah, but the enemies came along with the level, didn't it? So I can go self dot level dot enemies. And I should be able to grab that. That do kill parameter? You know what? Sure. Let's make it an instant one shot kill and we'll instantly blow up those enemies as soon as we shoot them. So, with that, let's see if we got that running. Oh, no, no, never mind. I'm going to jump back. There's one last piece missing here. <laughs> we never called the function. Whoopsie. So, down here inside our update function, we're also going to do handle collisions, 
itself about handle collisions, and it's going to get rocking and rolling right here. When this um, bullet updates, so that's every single time, it's going to check around. Is there anything for me to collide with? Take a look for all the enemies that are out there. Maybe there's one, maybe there's a dozen, I don't know. And if there are any enemies, we're going to instantly kill them off with that do kill parameter set to true. Let's see if that works. Jump around, zoom, and pop. Lovely. Absolutely spectacular. I now have my own way how to go and shoot my own bullets. OK, last thing I want to mention, this is a little bit off the script. I want to go and slow down that bullet stream, because I can just spam bullets until there is literally no tomorrow on that. So what I'm going to go and set up really quick here is a bullet timer as well. So um, self up or bullet timer. So this is going to be, or let's call it cooldown, bullet cooldown. And we're going to set that up to be maybe 500 milliseconds. And that's a good way just to make sure that it doesn't go too, too fast on me. So what I'm going to do here is say, um, let's see, I need to go and shoot my bullet. I need to go and remember how long I have shot that thing or when I've shot that bullet. And I need to say, if it's been 500 seconds between each bullet shot, then it's okay. Let's go and add another bullet into here. So I'm going to need another one. So I'm going to say self dot last um, bullet time. And you know what? Normally you're going to say zero because that's a practical time. But if you want to shoot the bullet as fast as you can be at the very beginning, I'm going to set this to a regular, ridiculous silly number. Negative nine, 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 nine milliseconds in the past. No player is ever going to be able to do that. But what we're going to want to do over here, and we're going to say um, time is equal to pi gain dot time dot get ticks. And we're going to say if the self dot bullets think or let's see, what did I call bullet cooldown? Last bullet time minus the current time. Oops, no, I got that backwards. I'm sorry. If my current time in right now minus some time in the past, if that duration is longer than self dot bullet cooldown time, which is that 500 milliseconds, then we're going to go and take this code, boop, bump it in. We're going to go shoot a bullet off. We're going to say self dot last bullet time is current is going to be equal to that current time as well. That's going to give us a nice cooldown so that we can't absolutely span the screen as hard as we can. Instead, we should be able to throw out bullets at a nice volley like that. All right. You know what? That is perfect. I think that that gives me a good spot for where to go here. So we talked about collisions. We got the, the shooting here. I think it was a little bit out of order. And you know that spam bullets I did? You can make that too, honestly. I think that this is actually a pretty simple way to go and build something as complicated as this gift down here. No, I did not make it. I just found it off the internet. So the curtain fires genre, you might know it by some other names here, is basically it has a billion bullets in there. Your job is to fly around and shoot bullets at, back at your opponent or try to go and do something with that. I think that you guys actually have the skills to go and make this now. All you have to do is take our platformer game, get rid of gravity, take the bullets that we've just introduced, and now aim them at the player instead of the enemies. And I think you'd be set to go. So I know that a couple of people mentioned they want to learn how to make this genre. The answer is you already know how to do it. Perfect. Some quick tips and tricks here. I'm just going to talk about keyboard shortcuts here. These are the ones that you saw me doing this entire time. When I do control and the slash key, that is a quick way to go and comment and uncomment. It's because in other programming languages, you use slash slash to comment. It's probably why they chose that really weird arcane symbol, control slash. And as well as tab to quickly go and indent your code and unindent it really quickly on the fly here. So for example, I highlight two lines of code here, control slash. If you're on max, that'll be command slash. I can go and highlight and I can comment those lines out really fast. If I want to indent it a little bit because indents are very important in Python, press tab a couple times, or I could just press shift tab to pull it back out. Keyboard shortcuts, you gotta love them. There's a million of them to learn. But after that, I honestly say, we're basically done for today's learning session. It's honestly time for you guys to get back to programming your games. Of course, I have to go and do the obligatory plug. We got the gala, we got it coming up here, and I want you guys to sign up for this because I think this is a fantastic opportunity. You guys get to go show off the games you made. You guys get to go learn from some industry speakers. I don't know, maybe hit them up for some jobs. So honestly, there's some really cool stuff. Again, I'm gonna go and send you that link just as another reminder. Please sign up for our gala. Perfect. And now I know that I mentioned that there is the project out there. What is the project? So basically, 
the project, if you guys want to go and submit your game, your pie game thing here, you can go and get some Ignite points. Top three projects, get some Ignite points there. There's just a couple caveats. Here are the hard rules on the left side here. You must use it. We can't mark anything outside pie game here. And you must have started this code from when our sessions began. I don't want to see what you programmed eight years ago. I want to see what you programmed with us right now. And please don't steal. Stealing is just wrong. Public libraries, that's a okay, but don't steal. And hard deadline, April 15th at midnight. Okay. When is this link due? Perfect. It is due April 15th. Are there any exceptions to this? Any late entries accepted? No late exceptions, not at all. So you guys better make sure you get those zip files packaged up, ready to roll and submitted. I'm not gonna wait around for you guys to have submissions that are dawdling over a slow internet. Make sure you get those in early. Now, if you wanna have the best game out there, what are you going to do? You're gonna to have to be somebody who's creative with it. You're gonna to have to go and get some good design and object-oriented programming and make it easy to learn, easy to pick up, not very difficult to get set up with. And okay, I'll accept a couple bugs here and there because they're really difficult. And you saw me make a million bugs today, but preferably if you guys don't have too many bugs, that'd be fantastic. And here's a good old submission link. If you guys want to go and submit your projects inside here, that is the link to do it. No pressure for it right now. Go ahead, submit as many times as you want. And we got a full list of the rules rewritten all the way over there. Plus a little bit more information for you guys as you need. But that is where we're going to go and store that information. All right, somebody has asked to quickly see what level.py looks like. Sure thing. Level.py is a really, really simple file. We got platform list, we got enemy list, and we say itself.platforms is pygame.sprite.groups platform list. Enemies, pygame.sprite.group enemy list. I'm going to go copy paste that entire code, drop it straight inside there. I know chat's a little bit messy, but I think that wraps up everything from my side. I've been chatting for a little bit too long here. What I want is to go and give you guys your time. This is your time to get back to building your games up now or whatever projects you want. I honestly don't have to restrict it to just games alone. All right, got a quick survey for you. How do you guys think of today's session? And then you're off to the races. While I'm here, mentors, please take attendance. All right. Perfect, perfect. Last five seconds for anyone who's finishing up there. But, all right. I think we're good to go. Thank you very much, guys. Let's go to our breakout rooms. Crack some eggs.